All right, hello, people. So, I think the last time we uh, got to this point, uh, criteria for choosing network media. So, if you look at the book, uh, right now we're on page 176, talking about cable grades. All right. Um, so, if you look at page 176 slash 177, um, the word that stands out to us there is the word plenum. All right. Plenum. Uh, like we said before, plenum uh, refers to what exactly? Well, right here, it says cables running between a false ceiling and the true ceiling are uh, known as plenum, right? So let's look at a, let's look at a picture here. Um, should we say plenum space? Plenum space. Um, I guess building. Look at images. All right, so here is a picture of a you know of a room in a house in a building. So when we talk about plenum spaces, right? The, uh, it, it says it's the uh, the space between the four ceiling and the true ceiling. All right, and that is here. So you can see this room here. You have a four ceiling where you have the projector, you have the air vents with the air coming down, and you also have the same similar space um, under the floorboards. And, and what you what we know about plenum spaces, besides the fact that you have, you know, um, your vents in the plenum spaces, you have um, some creepy crawlies sometimes, right? Uh, you have all kinds of cables and wires and connections in those plenum spaces. All right. So the most important thing for us to uh, I guess be aware of in this lecture is plenum spaces um, also have a way of moving the air around. So you can see this, this arrows, right? It moves the air. So the air moves back and forth in the plenum spaces, um, you know, right in the ceiling and under, uh, right under the floorboards, the air moves around. And because the air moves around, it is possible for, you know, anything in the air, all kinds of particles or, you know, anything toxic in the air to move around as well and affect, you know, whoever is in the building or in that room. So it's very important that the cables, right, the kind of cabling that we use in plenum spaces um, follow the specifications for plenum spaces, right? So if you go back here, it says cables running between the false ceiling and the true ceiling that's in the plenum space must be plenum rated. Plenum rated. That is, it must be, a, it must, the cables must be designed uh, for specifically the plenum spaces. Now, why is this important? First of all, it tells us here that uh, plenum rated cables are coded with Teflon. Now, Teflon, um, I think when you think about Teflon, you might also think about Teflon. Maybe you think about Kevlar, right? These are very uh, tough materials. And somebody said uh, uh, Kevlar might be what you find used for bulletproof uh, vests uh, used by the police or the military, right? So those are very tough materials. Uh, with, the, with the plenum rated cables, they are coated with Teflon. And so the design of the cables uh, means that there's going to be low combustibility. What does that mean? When there's fire, in fact, I have a picture for you here. Okay, let's go here. All right. So let's just use this diagram about plenum cables. So you see this right here. This is a CMP rated cable. Uh, back to the PowerPoint, the CMP is suitable for use in plenum spaces. Right, so let's look at some of the, uh, I guess, characteristics of the cable. All right, so uh, what do we want to know about CMP plenum uh, rated cables? Uh, it says, important thing there is, it's the only cable allowed in, in such spaces, defined as air plenums, you know, raised flooring systems and air handling ducts, 
more important or the most important thing, plenum cables must self-extinguish and not reignite. So you can imagine if there was a fire in this room here, um, obviously there's some kind of smoke or fumes coming through. Well, if the cables are toxic, you know, if, the, if the cables are toxic, that is when they burn, they emit toxic fumes. Then that's, that's dangerous. You never want to be in a room where the, where the air is toxic or you know, where there are toxic fumes. So to prevent the fire from, you know, I guess getting worse, or to prevent the cables uh, from helping the fire, so to speak, right? The kind of cables that you use in those spaces must have a certain design. So uh, back to that picture here. So plenum cables must be able to self-extinguish. Now, if it self-extinguishes, that's a good thing, right? It doesn't help the fire, which is good. Now, regular cables... Um, are used, it says right here, defined for usage in vertical tray applications such as cable runs between floors. So between floors will be, uh, let's say, CMR cables, um, CMR cables, let's just say, uh, elevator. So let's see a couple of pictures there. All right, so CMR cables are most likely going to be uh, in elevator areas, let's take a peek, look at this picture here. So that's a, let me get this out of here. So something like this, all right, yeah. So elevator shafts running from likely the ground floor all the way, well, here's a good example. So running from the, you know, from the, you know, basement all the way through the many floors of the building, going all the way up, right? The cables that are used in this kind of spaces don't have to be plenum rated. In fact, it says that these cables must actually must also self extinguish, but they are kind of designed differently, right? They are CMR. So plenum cables, it says it must self extinguish for plenum cables and not reignite. For CMRs, it says this cable must self extinguish. It doesn't say anything about the reigniting. So generally, People use um, non plenum cables uh, for risers, they're called risers. All right, so back to the PowerPoint. So, CMR can only be used for building risers or in cable trays. CMP is suitable for plenum spaces. So, when you go, if it's, if, if it's your job or you're, you know, you're working with your supervisor to get cables for your office and you're going to uh, do a search for CMP plenum. Cables. So let's do cables. So let's say you're going to do some shopping for cables uh, for your company, for your, you know, for your work. So here's one here that says 1,000 feet category 6A plenum CMP pure copper cable. So let's click on that and let's see what it looks like because this is a very important, um, you know, this is like, this happens in the real world. So if you have some idea here, well, you can be of assistance or value to your job, all right? All this leads you to a job. So 1,000 uh, feet, uh, category six, a 100% solid copper, plenum rated. So you're looking for plenum rated. Um, if, it was, if we were able to see, uh, like, you know, like look closer, yeah, you might even be able to see maybe where it says, uh, you've got to look closer or get a better picture. But sometimes on the outer sleeve of that cable, it will say um, that it's plenum rated or plenum cables. All right. So that's important when you're buying this kind of stuff here. You look at all the features. And of course, uh, they carry, um, you know, giganet Ethernet, fast Ethernet up to a certain speed and stuff like that. All right, so these are these cables are uh, designed for use in plenum spaces. All right, all right. Let's move on. Um, I mean, we'll spend some time on that topic because it's a very important um, material when 
you know, you're designing a building and you're going to, you know, run that, you're going to run internet in that building, everything has to be set up correctly. All right. In fact, also it says that the NFPA is the body in charge of setting the code requirements for protecting premium air spaces. So before your building gets approved, you know, you build a new building or you re renovate a building, before it gets approved, uh, you're going to get some inspectors that are going to come around to see if everything is up to code, like they say, right? If it's well designed, using the correct materials. All right, let's move on here. Okay, so it says right there in uh, page 176, we're talking about the kind of connection hardware. So while you're building your, you know, you guys are building your cables and everything, you have different, you know, materials that are used to connect. So generally, well, we're going to see those in a little bit, the kind of materials that are used, uh, connectors, right? The kind of connectors that are used. Depends on the kind of cabling, the connectors might be different, okay? Um, so when you're, obviously, when you're choosing or when you're, when you're building your, your media, your cables, then you want to be sure of, you know, what kind of cables are we going to get? You know, how easy is it to install it? Now, these are decisions that are made by supervisors or managers. It may not be your decision if you're not a manager, but you want to be able to test, um, test your, uh, it says testability. A network that works might be crippled by excessive errors. So you want to be sure that the cable meets the requirements. You don't just get any cable because it's cheap or you feel like. It has to be a cable that works for the particular requirements in the category. And of course, the cost of it, you know, that matters. All right. So this cable here, we looked at this before in the past. This is the coaxial cable uh, used for, you know, used primarily for cable TV. All right. Uh, coaxial cable or coax, C-O-A-X for short. Uh, where's that? Right here. And it's still used, you know, if you have cable at home, um, you know, you're going to see coaxial cables. I think I, I think we saw a picture, right? Let's go back and see if we have the picture. Well, I'll probably get a picture of that coaxial again. It's in one of the previous notes, but let's look, let's look at it here. Uh, coax cable. All right, so your coaxial cable... Yeah, it looks like that. I mean, the ends, right? The ends, you can twist the ends. So it looks like that, um, you know, twisty ends. So coaxial cable used for, you know, cable TV, you know, televisions and stuff like that. All right. All right. Twisted pair cable is, you know, what we're mostly uh, looking at. And that is unshielded, right? Unshielded and shielded. So... Unshielded and, and shielded uh, TP uh, or shield, you know, twisted pair cables. Um, so let's look at the other page and see some details here. So shielded and unshielded twisted pair cables. If it's STP for short, shielded, tw shielded twisted pair cables, um, then it's ideal for high speed networks, uh, 10 gigabit um, networks. All right, um, ensures data integrity. It's more expensive. All right, uh, it, it, it does have high speed, but it's more expensive. Uh, the more common, uh, the more common cables are the ones you're going to see, you know, you know, in your behind your computer desktop. You're going to see that that's what we use, you know, more commonly. That's the UTP on shielded two step pair. The shielded twisted pair is cheaper, um, easier to install. It's been around for a long time. You know, we kind of, we've gotten used to it. We know how it works, not too expensive. And you can have, you know, rows and rows and rows for, for your building, for whatever it's needed for, right? So that's what we're more used to. Every cable you see around you or you go to buy, it, you, you have to, I guess you have to, uh, it will tell, you know, whoever is, you know, wherever you want to buy it, you have to specify STP. Look, I don't want UTP. I specifically want STP. But generally, if you don't specify, 
what you're going to get from the stores is most probably going to be UTP, right? And you can see there, um, like, on the sleeve. If you look at the sleeve, you can see uh, it's going to say UTP. On shield, that three-step pair, okay? So, like I said, most networks use uh, UTP cables, and it consists of those four. Uh, it kind of looks like the STP, but the difference is the STP has this, this shield, this kind of foil kind of sh uh, shield. Uh, the UTP doesn't have that. Um, all right. Now, if you look at page 179, it tells us of the various um, organizations that regulate the industry. And these organizations you need to be familiar with. You're going to see those organizations come up in your assignment. Um, even in the real world, uh, different IT people are, you know, members of different organizations. So uh, the TIA, Telecommunications Industry Association, the EIA, Electronic Industries Alliance, and the ANSI, American National Standards Institute. These guys are responsible for categorizing, for coming out with guidelines. Um, it says that they are rated according to categories devised by these various organizations. Uh, you can read more about them. All right, so categories one to six A. Now, if you look at, we don't have it in this PowerPoint, at least not in my PowerPoint, but categories one to six A on page 179 and 180. Right, that information is there. Um, it, it describes, you know, the various characteristics, right, of each of the categories. One actually goes from one to eight, right? It goes from one to eight. Now it says that categories one to six A are accepted in the United States, um, but the others are not. Um, they're not, they've not been used in the United States, maybe in very um, limited areas, but they are used abroad in Europe, in Asia, I believe, and some areas. Now the most common, the most common categories um, are five E and six. So let's see, let's look, let's kind of zoom in on this, um, you know, on this information here about category five E and six. When you go to buy the cable, you're most probably going to get category five E and six. Now let's see this categories, sorry, the characteristics here. So it's important uh, to, to, to make a note of the cable length, right? The cable length is going to be 100 meters. The bandwidth, bandwidth is what? We've talked about bandwidth before, right? Bandwidth is usually, actually, if you look at my control panel here, uh, bandwidth is your, got your network and internet here. Bandwidth is speed right here, GBPS. Bandwidth, as we've said before, is measured in bits per second, right? That is B slash S, right? So on my computer there, I have one gigabit GBPS. That is the speed of data. How much data can you move every second? That's how you measure the speed of data, that's the bandwidth, B-A-N-D-W-I-D-T-H, bandwidth. How much data can you move um, every second, all right? So right here, back to the PowerPoint, uh, let me zoom back in here. So the bandwidth is up to 1,000 megabits per second, and 1,000 megabits per second is one gigabit, all right? 1,000 megabits, one G GBPS, all right? And obviously, um, my computer is functioning at that level, so you can tell that you know, my cables are most probably going to be the 5A or 6 range, all right? Because they're capable of moving one gigabit per second speed of data. So the categories, uh, the materials you use for your work, you've got to... Everything goes, everything's got to work together, 
the right cables, the right categories, the right speed. It's not guesswork, right? When you set this stuff up, um, people, you, you've got to be experienced. I mean, you guys are learning, but you've got to be experienced so you know the right things to choose. Just like when you go to buy a laptop for school. You don't just buy any laptop. You want to know what's the memory, the RAM, R-A-M, the RAM of the computer you're buying. Uh, if I go back here to my control panel, I do a search for name. Where is it? Here's an easy way to find some information about. So just type name. It's going to say, see the name of this computer right here. And so when you get here, you're going to see some information about the computer, just using this as an example. So you can see that right here, the RAM of this memory is 12 giga, gigabytes. Gigabytes, not speed. You're talking about storage uh, capacity and stuff. So RAM always refers to the speed of the computer. So for example, right now I have control panel open, I have PowerPoint open, I have you know Zoom open, all kinds of applications. RAM helps all those things move quickly. I don't have to shut down Zoom or shut down PowerPoint, you know, or shut down you know. Firefox so that the other guys can run. All the applications can run simultaneously thanks to the RAM. So your RAM, so when you're looking for a computer or just like cables, you gotta know, well, what am I looking for? Not just how nice the computer looks or if it has a detachable monitor. Does it have what I need? Then you're looking also at uh, you're going to your C drive, right? You wanna see the hard drive you know, capacity, like right here, if you go to this PC, look at your C drive, you can see that my C drive originally had 475 gigabytes, right, of storage. So those are the kind of things you look for on the specs of a laptop or a computer, right? If the, I mean, the color and all that stuff is important, but you're looking for the things that actually make that device work, all right? Okay, let's keep going here. So. So 5E five five, five e and 6 uh, category cables, 5 and 6, also the cost, right? Least expensive. Now, the connector type, we talked about the connectors, right? The plugs, the, the RJ45s, they're called, RJ45s. Uh, this RJ45 here, RJ45. So these are your RJ45s here, your connectors that go inside the cable, right? That's your RJ45. The wires go into RJ45, just like you did in your, in your cable building lab. All right. So the cost, the connector type RJ45, the security, it's moderately susceptible to each dropping, right? We've said that before. Uh, with the right tools, um, a criminal can figure out what data is moving along the wire with the right tools, right? So that's why we need encryption. That's why we need security um, when we set up uh, different networks. Okay, so so you want to kind of keep an eye on, you know, you know, you want to properly study the characteristics there uh, for your assignments. Uh, give me one second here. All right. And that's the picture of the RJ45s there. All right. So RJ45s used in STP and UTP cables uh, as connectors. All right. And this table that we just looked at here is on page 181. All right. All right. Let's keep going. I think uh, let's see if we missed if we missed nothing here. All right. So we talked about the different standards organizations that regulate uh, the design, the composition of these different categories of cables. And the information, detailed information uh, on page 180. And we also have it in this uh, uh, table 4.2 here. Same with the book on page 181. All right, let's keep moving. So that's the RJ45, that's your cable right there. Now this is the patch panel, right? In a computer room, you're most likely gonna see a patch panel. Let's see if we can get a picture of the patch 
tunnel computer in the computer room. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so in the computer room, um, something like this here, something like this. Let's see if that's a good picture. Oh, uh, where's it? Patch. Okay, so this might be a, a patch panel. Actually, let's get a better picture. That picture doesn't show you a lot. Patch panel computer room. Okay, so something like this, this might be a good one here. All right, so the patch panels are basically used to properly organize your cabling. Let me get another picture here. All right, well, yeah, so if you look at this one here, you can see uh, the patch panels are used to organize the cable, just like we have in this PowerPoint, right? It's used to organize your cable and it has numbers. It keeps everything organized, you know, in order. Now compare that to, uh, to this picture here. Uh, actually, I saw a picture right here. Okay. Now look at this picture here. Um, well, I don't think you want to be in a computer room that has cables like this, right? This is a total mess. In fact, I have a better one that is more of a mess. Let's take a look at that. Um, okay, well, let's look at this. Well, that picture, well, yeah, that picture is good. Let's see. Oh, no, it's a small picture. All right. I mean, this is a mess, right? You don't ever want to be in a computer room that has cables like this. Right? I'm sure I'll find a better one still that, that's kind of clear. Okay? Yep. Now, there's a word, believe it or not, there's a word for, you know, when you have cables that look totally messed up like this. It's an interesting word. Uh, it's called... Yeah, spaghettification. You know, when you have cables that are this messed up, uh, you say that, well, they've been spaghettified. You know, there's, a, there's spaghettification going on. So that stuff, needs, that mess needs to be cleaned up. I mean, imagine this might be, your, you know, you go for the internship, you're so excited, you know, to, to get on the job. And the first day uh, your boss says to you, all right, um, uh, John, I need you to, you know, come over here. Here's your first task. And you have to um, deal with this identification of all the cables, right? Uh, your boss might tell you something like, let's see, I give you some kind of a before and after picture. I just saw a couple of them before and after. Let's see those before and after pictures. All right, so, yep, yeah, something like this. So your boss says to you, well, um, John, I would like you to, you know, your, you know your, your, you do your internship and you're trying to learn. Well, we have to use patch cables to organize, you know, our cabling. So you have all the spaghettification going on on the left side. Well, that's terrible. That's a risk, right? In fact, you can even get tripped, right? You walk around your computer room, you can trip and fall. And all kinds of lawsuits, right? So right here is what we want to do. We want to keep everything organized. You know, it looks nice, right? So that's what patch cables do, um, help to keep stuff organized in a computer closet. All right, let's move on. Now, distribution racks. Uh, distribution racks are, you know, we call them, actually, they're this racks here, right? They're this tall, you know, seven, nine, feet tall, uh, you might also call them 
server racks used to store servers and different devices, you know, pretty tall, six, you know, seven, um, nine feet uh, server racks. You're going to see them in, in any computer room, and they look um, something like this, like cages, sort of, you know, like cages for, you know, comp to organize computers, right, something like that. So you can see what they look like. Uh, you stack your, your different devices, servers, switches, um, and then you have your you have your patch cables. You know, organizing everything. All right. It keeps all your all your devices pretty organized. So they're distribution racks, you might call them. Server racks, you might call them. Um, used in every computer room to keep things, you know, pretty neat. You're going to see this information there um, all the way to page 182, page 184, right? Um, and page 184 has a better, well, has a, you know, with, 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 with uh, labels for that distribution rack. Uh, you place switches, you place routers, you place servers, you place your patch panels and your cables to keep everything pretty um, organized, right? Okay. Now let's talk about you know a few more things here that relate to the work area you know in the office. Um, I mean right now maybe even at home, but your work area has some I guess specifications, right? Some suggestions for how things should be set up. Okay, so work area we have that information on page one eighty five. The work area is 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 where you work. Okay, it's where your your, your computer is. Well, if you have a laptop, you know, your laptop just goes everywhere. But generally, this will refer to a workstation, you know, a workstation in, a, um, in an office, workstation, office. All right, so your workstation, right, uh, this guy here is at a workstation. So when we say workstation, that's what we mean, you know, where you sit down, you have your computer, your laptop, that area. So the specifications there for workstations, it says horizontal wiring. So the wiring or the cable that runs from the work area's wall jack to the telecom's closet. So here's your wall, wall you know, your face plate, right, where you connect your, your cables. So what it's saying here is from this work area, so let's say this guy here has his work area, well, Whatever cable gives him internet, right? Maybe it runs, you know, under, you know, underneath the floor, into the wall, all the way to the computer room or the telecoms closet. Okay, it says um, wiring from the wall jack to the patch panel. The patch panel, all that, all those, all that stuff is in the computer room, right? Um, so it says not longer than ninety meters, ninety meters, right? So when you're if you're involved in setting up an office or you're watching people set up an office, they've got to maintain the specifications, right? The wiring must uh, be no longer than 90 meters, all right? Um, and then you add a little extra for patch cables. And then it says that your telecommunications closet or your computer room, as it's called, right? That's what provides connectivity to your computer equipment. So. Like I said, back to this picture, in most co companies or offices, you're going to have a telecommunications closet or a computer room or a server room. All the workstations, right, have wiring, maybe, you know, in the plenum spaces, in the spaces above the ceiling or underneath the floor that runs from the work area all the way to the uh, computer room. Right, that's how they're set up. So if you're curious about it, when you return to work or you return to school, um, you know, tell the folks there, can I see your computer room? You know, I'm an IT student, just to see how things are set up. Maybe we'll take a couple of pictures if they allow you, right? Because, um, I mean, as an IT student, as an IT um, employee, you are going to spend a lot of time in a computer room. You know, it's part of what you do. It's kind of like if you walk in a restaurant, you're probably going to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, right? So something like that. 
All right, let's keep going here. So that's the kind of like the setup. Here's your workstation, the computer. That's your Ethernet cable, Apache cable. It's called. Goes all the way connected uh, using the horizontal cabling. All right, which is most probably your uh, what your plenum rated cables because it's going to go in the ceiling area, and then it connects to your um, in your computer room in your server rack or distribution rack, like it's called here. All right. Uh, well, same thing here is what we talked about, your equipment room or computer room or server room. Um, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, so that's where you, you, ha you have your servers, your routers, your switches. Like I said, if you have the opportunity, go to a computer room and, you know, or tell the IT guys, you know, can I look at the computer room, you know? I'm an IT student, just to see what it looks like in a room that might be something like this. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Now, these are the materials uh, that you need for your cables, all right? So um, we're all doing that, you know, this last few weeks and building the cables. So even as a professional, you will suddenly use these materials. Um, for, so we're not gonna spend too much time um, so the picture is here, and the pictures are on page 189, all right? So crimpers, punch down to scissors, cable testers, all the stuff you need. And obviously, like you saw in that video, this video up here that you can look at, um, your, when you assemble the um, wires together, they've got to be in a certain order, right? Because the, like you says here, uh, the first pin, white with the green stripe, right, transmits. The green transmits. So some transmit, some receive, some are unused. So the order when you set that, when you arrange the cabling and all that stuff, the order is important. Now, something else that's important, there are two standards, right, two 568A and 568B, two standards of... Um, you can see them on page 190. So uh, let's talk about the standards for one second here. Now, standard patch cables, the one you use for your computer, you know, the one you're building right now is called a straight through, um, straight through cable, all right? Actually, let me, let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Uh, we have two cables. One is the straight through, same wiring standard on both ends. So if you had, you know, if you have 568A on one end, it's the same 568A on the other end, right? That's a straight through. So yeah, absolutely. The cables that we use at home are the cables that you're building. Um, they are the 568A. All right. 568A or 568B, same on both sides, right? Same on both ends. Now you have crossover cables, right? Crossover cables have, you can see that on page 190, crossover cables are used, here's the description here. Um, this type of cable is often needed when you connect two devices of the same type. So you wanna connect two computers, directly, or two, uh, two switches, two routers, things like that, right? Uh, you use crossover cables. Now, sometimes some people tell me, oh, I just use a regular cable and it worked. Well, it may not really, it might appear to work, but if you give it some time, you might realize it's, maybe it's not really giving you the connection you need. So I, the ideal cable type and name is called a crossover cable. What's the difference? The ends, right, uh, right here. So let me go back to this. Uh, okay, so the ends, right? So this, this, this end here and this end here have different categories. So it might be 568A on this end and 568B on this end. That's gonna be crossover. If they're the same standard on both sides, then it's referred to as a straight through. So generally, the cables that we use, the most common are straight through cables. 
But when you need to connect like two switches, like you need to daisy chain two switches, two hubs, things like that, you've got to use crossover cables. All right. So, all right, let's keep going. And you can see uh, some kind of like some information. If you're dealing with a crossover cable, your setup, you know, when you build a crossover cable is much different from when you build, um, you know, regular cables. The combination of the white and orange and different colors, uh, you've got to pay attention to that. So people who are into building of, you know, cables, you know, as part of the job, as part of the job, they have to pay attention, right, to all these different uh, descriptions here, right? It's like when you're producing stuff, uh, mass producing stuff, well, you've got to pay attention to all the specs, right? You don't want to produce a lot of the wrong thing. You know what I mean? A lot of the wrong thing. So it's really important. Okay, well, I'm going to skip some of this, this here now and... Let's go to fiber optic cable. So if we go to page, let's see now. All right, page 197, we go to fiber optic cable. Now, fiber optic cables are, you know, a big deal. They have, they're much, very, I mean, highly superior, you know, very, you know, superior to copper cables, right, for a lot of reasons. Um, I mean, almost every category, I mean, there's, there's really no, there's no serious comparison, right? Fiber optic, uh, if possible, you know, is the best option. Uh, it says right here that the bits are transmitted as pulses of light and not electricity. Um, they're um, immune to any kind of electrical interference, which means that, that they have a high, they're highly secure, right? Highly secure. Uh, and the way it looks, it looks like this. Somebody says, um, looks like the hair of a punk star, you know, a rock rock star, rock musician, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. All kinds of, you know, strands of hair, different color types. If you guys uh, watch rock stars performing. Anyway, so that's what it looks like. The few, if you're able to look at it microsco microscopically, you're going to see that... Um, you know, it has the, the, the strands, these strands here are made of glass, right? With all these different, you know, materials around it. I'm gonna show you the names of all these different materials. It's important for you to know them because they're part of your exam, part of your assignment. All right, so let's see. So right here, this, uh, this diagram, I guess, of this figure is on page 198. Now you gotta you gotta really pay attention to this because this uh, you have questions on this right you have to you're gonna see these arrows and it's gonna ask you to identify well this arrow is pointing to what well the first part here is your optical fiber then the other the next part there is your inner sheath you have your Kevlar remember we mentioned Kevlar um, earlier in terms of protection for the cable then the out of sheath here, right? Out, out of sheath. So you've got to know, be able to, you know, if you see this diagram here, it's not going to show you this descriptions. You've got to know, all right, this is, you know, the outer sheath, that's the Kevlar, that's the inner sheath, that's optical fiber and all that stuff, right? All right, so that is on page 198. Uh, look at that. Let's see some more info about the fiber optic cable. Um, so it's used, uh, it says right here, fiber optic cable used as backbone cabling. When it says backbone, that just refers to, um, you know, cables that are used, you know, ideally in plenum, plenum um, areas, you know, in risers, you know, for example, you can see the cabling that's running, you know, right up here, all through the top side of this building, right? The backbone, basically, um, very important cabling going around the building. Let's see how that picture, pictures might, you know, really help you. Uh, backbone cabling. 
All right, so backbone cabling, yeah, all kinds of cables that you see, you know, very important, you know, when you look around the building and you see, you know, huge cables around the whole place, those are called backbone, right? They are the main cables that carry signals, carry the internet, um, sometimes carry electricity, right? Backbone cabling, that's what they refer to, you know, pretty dur durable kind of materials and they're fiber optic, right? Fiber optic, so they're used as backbone cabling and they come in different bundles. It says some testing has shown that this glass fibers can carry several terabits, right? Terabits, 1,000 gigabits per second, right? So, I mean, on my computer, we're talking about what? Uh, where's my Ethernet here? We're talking about one gigabit, one GB, right? But with fiber optic, you're talking about, what does it say again? 1,000 gigabits per second. So think about the speed, right? Think about the speed um, that you can get from fiber optic. It is, it is awesome, right? It is awesome. So it says right here, fiber optic cable may one day replace copper for all types of network communications because it is the ideal, right? Highly secure. Um, the length of it can be, you know, it can go, I mean, right, okay, let's look, let's, let's look at these details here to see some more characteristics. So right here, it says the, the length, right? It can go 100, you know, 62.14 miles, right? Um, I mean, what is 62.14 miles? That's pretty, that's quite a distance, right? 62.4 miles compared to, let's see, when we compare that to, uh, when we compare that to, let's see, category five and six cables, let's just see that for one second right here. So you can see that uh, category five and six cables can only go 100 meters. That is 328 feet. Okay, 100 meters. I mean, what's 100 meters? Um, in the Olympics, right? Um, Usain Bolt runs 100 meters, dash. But now compare that to, uh, let's go back to fiber optic. Fiber optic can go, what? 62 miles. So, you know, that's quite a distance. I mean, that can span several towns, you know. So obviously use that for heavy duty, you know, projects, maybe linking different towns or something. You know, um, power comes from Verizon or from Comcast to your, you know, to your property, to your house. Now the bandwidth, 10, 40, 100 gigabits per second, much higher, right? Uh, the cost, now the, I guess the downside, the downside to fiber optic is the cost. Pretty expensive, right? Pretty expensive. Um, the security, it's not susceptible to eavesdropping and it's not susceptible to, you know, it, it has no interference. So it's basically perfect, right? Um, it's perfect. But like we just said, in terms of the cost, that is what makes it, you know, pretty, you know, I don't know. Decisions have to be made. Sometimes in a building, you're going to have, um, you know, some parts of the building, you're going to use fiber optic cable, and some parts of the building are going to use just regular cabling, all right? So people have to mix stuff up because of the cost of it. All right, let's keep going here. So these are all the tools that are used when you're, you know, when you're on the field, on the job, or as a, you know, as a technician, you need all your tools, right? Okay, let's, we're gonna to return this, to this topic, you know, um, every once in a while. Now the connectors, you might want to look at the connectors that are used for fiber optic. I mean, we're not going to build fiber optic cables, but in terms of the connectors, you find the connectors on page 199. They're different from RJ45s, and it's a good idea to know the names, right? You have the straight tip, you have the straight connection, locking connection, mechanical transfer register jack, 
Um, so you have different names and you have the pictures. So take a look at page 199. It gives you, uh, you know, pictures of the different connections because you might see this in your assignment, right? All right. So again, like I said, if you are, you know, you work as a as a vendor, you know, or a manufacturer, then you have to be more concerned and be more aware of all the different, you know, um, I guess characteristics of cables and you know different uh, specifications. Very important. All right. Let's, uh, last topic is we're going to look at uh, wireless. We've talked about wireless, you know, quite a few times, but let's just see um, a few things here. So the first thing to note uh, here is obviously there's always demand for wireless. Without wireless, we couldn't do a lot of stuff. We'll always, you know, stuck to a computer with a wire. All right. So um, you're always going to use wireless, but as we should know, as, or as we know, your wireless is dependent on your wired, on wired networks, right? Your wireless is right here, says, um, uh, connecting to a wireless AP, the AP or router usually connects to the internet via a wired connection to a modem, right? And then, and then you get wireless. Um, Starlink, uh, Elon Musk is, you know, right now, they are deploying satellites, you know, in space so that people can get, um, you know, without having to worry about wires, people can get internet. So that's an option um, when, you know, you use uh, satellite beams. But here we're talking about, you know, in the home or in an office environment, you are able to, you know, get wireless by connecting to uh, by having your device, your router uh, connected to uh, the internet, and then you get wireless out of there. All right. So the benefits are obvious, right? I mean, people can you can work without being stuck in a place. You can, you know, expand the business. People can, you know, have laptops and IoT devices. A lot of benefits to using um, wireless. You know, customers come to the office, you go to, you know, restaurants, you go to the airport. Well, it's, it was, it, was, it would be obviously a very, very difficult thing if everybody had to get stuck at a desktop. All right. So wireless, and you can use your phone, you know, the benefits are, you know, it's hard to, there's so many of it, right? Obviously having wireless. All right. Uh, so types of wireless networks, uh, you see a list here on this slide. You see them all over chapter four um, on page 206, 207. So you might want to pay attention to those. You have local area networks. You have extended LANs, internet service, mobile computing. They, you have cell towers, right, that help with um, – you know, you're going on the highway, you have cell towers. Here's a picture of cell towers on the highway. So cell towers, when you're on the highway, obviously, uh, the cell towers keep the com communication going, right? So, uh, but, you know, if you're in an area that, you know, you don't have a lot of cell towers, you're going to not, you're going to have very poor service or no service at all. All right. So let's take a note of that. All right. Let's see what else we got here. So this is basically describing how the things work, right? Your network, your NIC card, right? Um, just the design of the AP, the AP system, or how it's designed. Um, there's a transmitter to send and receive wireless traffic, but also connects to the wired side of the network. All right, shuttles back and forth between the network's wired and wireless service. So that AP device, um, you know, it does a lot of work. It says it's going to be installed. It, it does the translation between wired and wireless. So you have your router, you have your router at home, and you have your laptop. All right. Well, 
that router is doing the job of sending you signals right back and forth, signals back and forth, and also send signals to the wired computers. So your desktop is getting signals why, uh, thanks to the wire, and your laptop is getting signals wirelessly. So your AP access point or router does a lot of work. Okay. Uh, in terms of the frequencies, so we're gonna round up now. In terms of the frequencies um, that wireless runs on, uh, we see them here. Uh, radio, microwave, infrared, um, running at different kilo, kilohertz, 10 uh, kilohertz to 300 um, megahertz. So radio, microwave, infrared, these are all different frequencies that wireless is gonna run on. Um, and it says wireless lands make use of four primary technologies for transmitting and receiving data, infrared, laser, narrowband, spread spectrum. So you see more information on page uh, 208, right, two, 208. All right, so the last thing here is, you know, just to wrap this up, when you're choosing media, like I said, you work for a company, you know, or you're, you know, you work for a contractor, or you know, you're trying to help your dad set up at home, you always look at what's the correct cable that we need in UTP, fiber optic, or say wireless, we wanna go with wireless. You want to, you've got to know the correct speed that you're going at, you gotta have a budget, right? Um, Cause these things can get expensive depending on what you're buying. You gotta know the right length or distance of coverage, right? Um, obviously, if we go back to this picture, a workstation that has been wired may not be such a problem, but if you look at a, you know, maybe a, a bigger office with a lot more computers and stuff, uh, let's see, yep, so a lot more computers than you probably are talking about, you know, longer cables and, you know, stuff like, you know, more cables and plenum cables maybe going into the roof. The whole design of it is important, right? The whole, the, how, how it's set up. So it might be your job one day to help set up an office like this, you know, with wireless. And so having this knowledge, right, will be extremely helpful. I mean, now for your assignments and exams, and you know, when you work as an IT um, professional. All right, so, so you can read this uh, final notes in the summary area on page 210, and it, it kind of gives you a summary here in this table of the different cables, the UTP, STP, fiber optic and wireless, kind of like when you compare the characteristics, right? Um, the length of it, the bandwidth, so you can see UTP, 10 megabits per second, fiber optic, 100, right? So, and then you can see wireless there. Wireless tends to perform at a much, you know, um, less bandwidth because of all the interference and all the issues it has to deal with. The installation, um, UTP is easy. Fiber optic that tends to be, you know, it's, you know, can be, be difficult. Interference, absolutely no interference with a fiber optic. I mean, look at that, right? Um, and But it's the most expensive, so you can see that. So that's a good table uh, for comparison there. All right, so that brings us to the end of uh, this uh, chapter, chapter four. And the next chapter we're gonna go to in chapter five, uh, we're going to go on network protocols. We talked about that earlier in chapter one and two, but we'll go into more details in chapter five about network protocols.